G'day, I'm Ryde, your Chief Espresso Officer, and today I'm gonna to tell you all about the milk and getting the most out of your milk jug so that you get all the pouring right, the temperature right, and if you're lucky, some nice latte art to show off to your friends. So let's get into it. Okay, so firstly, a quick note on milk itself, because this does make a difference. Obviously, if you buy the cheap milk, it's mostly diluted with water. It's gonna be a lot harder to get that nice steam out. I always go for unhomogenized milk. I just love the creaminess of it. That's for the flavor. Sometimes it can be a bit trickier to actually get a nice latte art out of some of the different types of milks, especially during certain seasons when there's too much rainfall or not enough rainfall, the cows actually process the milk differently and can often lead to what we call lemonade milk where it just doesn't steam up at all. If you're using alternate milks, definitely look for Barista. And some of these you can't even buy in the supermarket. So you might have to go and ask your local cafe if you can buy it from them. But you want, if it's an oat milk or an almond milk, you want to get Barista made milk because it does stretch in a much different way to your regular oat milks and almond milks. So anyway, that's the tip on milk itself. Now we're gonna look at heating and angle and everything to do with about steaming your milk. But we're gonna talk about first is heating. So first thing with milk is finding the right size jug because you don't wanna be filling your milk up too high and you don't wanna be using milk that's tiny in the bottom of it, it's just too hard to control. Always wanna fill it up to about that notch there and you wanna make sure that that notch is that that amount of milk is actually good for the cup that you're using. Now, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the temperature because this can affect your milk greatly. If you steam your milk too hot, and that's higher than 70 degrees or 160 Fahrenheit here, you can see, then it's actually gonna scold the milk, it's gonna taste pretty awful, and it's also going to separate some of the molecules so you'll never get that nice silky milk. So getting one of these, this is actually just a sticker, you can buy it and you can just place it on any milk jug. You don't need to buy a special milk jug, but there are some special milk jugs. This is definitely the best way. You can also get a thermometer which sticks in the top. That helps, but just understanding you wanna be aiming for around the 65 degree mark for your temperature. You can go hotter if you really need it hotter, but too, too hot and you scold the milk and separate all of the milk. All right, so first thing, make sure your milk is super cold. You don't wanna be holding it and go, mm, a bit warm. That will only add to your troubles stretching it. Make sure it's super cold, fill it up to there, as I said. Purge your steam wand if you can. Not all the home machines allow you to do that, but if you can, purge it. Yeah, this is a thermometer that you can use if you don't have this thermometer. If you don't have any thermometer, make sure you hold on the opposite side to where the steam wand's going so that you're not directing the hot air straight onto the palm of your hand. And use your palm, touching it on and off, that will help you understand how hot it actually is. We want to rest this steam wand in the notch of the spout of the milk jug. So see how it's sitting there? That gives you your balance, so it's not just floating around like this. Lock it in, tilt this slightly back, and go up to the point where the milk just almost touches the nozzle. That you need to do in preparation. If you hold it underneath like that, then milk goes up inside and goes down into your boiler and ruins the whole thing. So you wanna make sure that you always have it outside unless it's steaming. You want to do the milk into the bottom right hand quadrant. So if we drew a line here and a line across there, we're aiming for the milk nozzle to poke into that corner so that it gets the spinning happening. And you'll see what I mean when I turn on the steam. Immediately, it's spinning in a vortex. Now that we've got it spinning, we can drop it down just a fraction. You don't wanna be going just wanna be dropping it down a little bit so it's nice sounds. And then the milk stretches and it rises up and it actually stops stretching because the milk covers all of the nozzles. You don't want to keep pulling it down. As soon as the milk's gotten warm, you want to stop it and head towards the middle just to suck up any rogue bubbles. And then when your temperature reaches above 70, you know you've gone too far. So you can see it's sitting perfectly right in the middle of the blue zone. 
which is about the range of temperature that's perfect for most coffees. All right, so before we jump straight into the pouring, I want to explain a little bit about the science behind what's happening when you're steaming milk. You have to imagine there's a whole bunch of protein molecules in there which are part of the milk makeup. They are hydrophobic, which means they hate water. And they don't want to attach to water, they want to attach to anything but water. So this is where we bring in the air. The steam actually allows those protein molecules to bond with it. And then you create that silky textured milk below the regular liquid milk. Fats are another interesting thing that we add into this. And fats are in every tasty milk. So your full cream milks, your alternate milks as well. Now, this is why skinny milk actually does stretch a little bit better and create that silkier milk than full cream milk because when you add fats into the mix, the choices are limitless. The molecules of protein actually go, hey, what's over there? Do we choose with the air or do we hang out with the fat molecules? And they don't bond with just the air molecules. So you are going to do nothing with your milk because half of them will happen over here on the fat molecules and half of them will happen over there on the air molecules. In general, if you are choosing milks, just remember that some milks will interact differently when you're steaming them. Now we get on to the really interesting ones, the alternate milks. So you might say, well, coconut milk. How come coconut milk does not steam properly and stretch? The reason this is coconut milk has its protein molecules are so weak to bond, they can't actually bond with any other molecule. So they try to bond with the air molecules, but they can't. They try to bond with the fat molecules, but it's very hard. So what they are doing is basically just swirling around and you might find when you try to steam coconut milk that it just doesn't steam in the way that you want it to. Choosing a milk, make sure it's barista made if it's an alternate milk or a barista, even a barista full cream milk because they have added some extra proteins into the milk to allow it to bond easier with the air when you're steaming it. Don't sacrifice the flavor for your milk, of course, but just understand that to get that super silky milk might not be the milk that you're using at home now. Now, you want to always make sure that your milk is silky like wet paint. If you set it down there for even half a minute, it's gonna separate and you're gonna end up with a foamy texture on the top instead of this homogenized, mixed in, beautiful silkiness. So to do that, keep wobbling around and spinning it around and just making sure there's no air bubbles. If there are any air bubbles in there, give them a knockout on the bench. It's not for show that knockout, it's actually to get rid of the bubbles. Now, when you're pouring, this is super important, even knock out the bubbles in your coffee shot. Super important that you keep mixing the milk in and make sure that your coffee has a nice crema on top. And when you pour, slowly pour the milk in. You can move it around just to give it, this just helps create a little bit of a layer on so that when you go for your patterns, you end up with a lovely, nice texture on top. And the contrast between the leaves and the coffee around it. So what I'm doing there in that situation is that I'm holding the milk jug with my thumb and forefinger at the tip of the handle. And that gives me greatest control and then the three fingers can sit into there. That just gives me greatest amount of control. If you hold it like this, you don't have as much control and your thing will move around. I've seen other people do the thumb over the top, thumb underneath. You can hold your thumb and forefinger around the actual milk jug itself. That is another way of doing it. However, you know, you've got to be careful you don't burn your fingers as well. So what you want to do is tilt this enough so that you can really get your milk jug right in there. And it helps using a wide mouth cup. So you can really get your milk in to the back and you're not pouring it too fast and you're not dribbling it too little. You need to find that nice balance where it just comes out and it sits into the coffee crema and billows out. In order to master it, it's gonna take more than just making one or two coffees every day. It's going to take a lot of time. So don't be harsh on yourself if you don't get it right the first time. It's about practice. Those methods, every time you make it, just try to do it in the best way you can. So there's a quick video on everything you need to know about milk. Obviously, it's not everything. There's so much more to learn. If you wanna learn more about how to become an ultimate home barista, check out my website, 
ultimatebaristacourse.com. There's tons of different courses in there, all with videos. We go deeply into all different aspects of making espresso at home. So check that out. I'm Ryde, your Chief Espresso Officer. Enjoy your brew.